Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Lotus World welcomes you all and especially Tej for giving us the time this lovely afternoon. Welcome on the show, Tej. How are you? Good, thanks, Vipul. How are you? Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Um, let's start. Tej, over to you. Uh, let us all know about you, who you are. Uh, well, uh, my name is Tej Preet Singh. Uh, uh, I am a Windhamite from last six years, been living in Windham for last six years. Uh, I moved from Adelaide, uh, lived in Adelaide for four years, uh, then, uh, yeah, make my home uh, Melbourne and in Melbourne, Windham. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw Windham growing in front of my eyes, especially Tarnate. Mm -hmm. uh, when we came in, there were not many uh, developments around, but I've seen Wyndham as growing in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal life, uh, I'm a father of three and uh, married to a wonderful person. She's very supporting. And uh, as far as my work is concerned, uh, I'm a self-employed with a small transport business. And uh, yeah, doing good. That's good. Um, so I think Adelaide, you said about four years and uh, Wyndham or Melbourne is about six years. So all in all, about 10 years. 10 yeah. years in Australia, yeah. Right. Uh, let's go back in a little bit of history. Uh, what what brought you to Australia? Well, uh, you know, being, uh, being from Punjab, uh, you know, always you have in mind uh, that you want to settle abroad for better uh, opportunity, for better life, for, uh, for the better life of kids as well. Uh, done my graduation in commerce uh, in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, then after doing commerce, uh, I started my job in banking sector, started with one of the very reputed banks in India, mm -hmm. uh, HDFC, okay. and worked with them for three years. And then I moved into uh, their insurance sector. At that time, 2006, six seven, insurance mm -hmm. was, life insurance was a very booming sector in India. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked for them for like three years. Before moving to Australia, I was uh, running a branch uh, with uh, 120 people reporting, mm -hmm. uh, 12, 12 direct reporting, and then uh, another team of agents who were in the field. Uh, so I have a good experience uh, in team handling. Mm -hmm. Then uh, always in my mind, back of my mind, that I want to move to uh, Australia. Because lots of friends, uh, after doing their graduation, they moved to Australia. They always, we always sh share the experience of how they feel in Australia, you know, the better life. And that make my mind to move to Australia. And then, yeah, uh, in 2009, mm -hmm. I moved to Australia, yeah. Yeah. Um, how was your uh, journey? How was your initial part of the journey in uh, South Australia, Adelaide? Uh, you know, Whipple, it's you know you know better as well. Uh, it's very hard uh, for a migrant to start a new life in uh, in any any country outside your home country. Uh, especially uh, language was not a barrier for me, but uh, you know you come to this part of the world and um, you feel like that you know you are new to this uh, whole part of life. You know the way Australian life is all about uh, then you come to learn that uh, the mateship and you know yep. help with each other standing in rough times yep. and I feel very very good and started my career in uh, Adelaide with a small uh, uh, meat processing plant uh, worked mm -hmm. there as a supervisor mm -hmm. uh, in the distribution. Mm -hmm. and I was doing good over there and then I always have a mind that I want to move to the beautiful city of Melbourne. Uh, I always heard about it. Lots of my friends, they live in here. I used to come down and visit them. So always liked Melbourne. And yeah, then we made our mind to move to Melbourne. Right. Um, just touch base in brief, the initial journey when you landed in Melbourne from Adelaide and how, how was those initial a year or two? Uh, was it comparable to what you went through Adelaide or it was far better, softer than the settling in Adelaide? 
Adelaide, uh, it was, you know, there was nobody people uh, I knew uh, over there, or lots of my friends, they live in uh, Melbourne. So when I always in talk with them, uh, they always keep me, you know, saying that move, move here. You know, they all lives in a closer vicinity, like Hoppers, Werribee, Tane. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they always keep pushing me to come over here. And then they help me a lot. We moved to Melbourne. Uh, I bought a house first and then mm -hmm. in. Uh, then, uh, yeah, in career, there were like six odd months which we are doing some casual work here and there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just settling down. I want to settle down properly with my family because even it's were new for the family as well, new place, yep. everything around. So yeah, after that, lots of friends, they are into transport industry. They, they helped me a lot to mm -hmm. start my own uh, small venture. Right. And I think I'm doing all right at the moment. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, happy with the journey so far, yeah? Well, absolutely. I love this place. Uh, it's a home for me now and home for all of us, all Southeast, uh, South Asian people from South Asia. Yep, yep, it's a beautiful yep. country. Yep. And I have learned a lot here and it has uh, changed me as a person as well. Mm -hmm. Lots of good things. You know, I made lots of good friends from local community. Yeah, mm. so far very good. Yeah, right, right. So you've moved from India to Australia, South Australia to Victoria. The the journey has been progressive. Yeah. So far, so far. Um, what is the source of your inspiration? Uh, well, always it's always been my my faith my religion i believe in uh, sikhism uh, follow sikhism and uh, my guru uh, it's always been an inspiration for me whenever is a torrid time whenever i'm feeling down you know it's it's the gurbani is the is the uh, prayers we do and you you feel always motivated and and yeah it it gives you a path how to tackle these problems and come out of it as, um, you know, as a winner. So, yeah, it keeps me motivated and inspira inspired as well. Right. Um, any any of uh, a leader or two in the current time whom you observe, whom you uh, uh, inspire yourself and learn and, you know, you apply what their way of doing things or their way of um, following the life path, and you kind of implement in your life. Are there any leaders to, in, in kind of today's time? One or two, if you want to name. Well, um, I do have a lot of respect for uh, Mr. Daniel Andrews. Um, it's a tough time for him as well. Yeah. But what I think uh, the leaders are known by their decisions. Sometimes they, they take hard decisions. Yeah. Sometimes we feel that, oh, it's it's been a bit harsh on us. But, you know, I have seen from the past all the big names in the history of the civilization. They had took some uh, very harsh or very hard decisions, I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can say after three, four years, you will find that, oh, those steps were taken by Mr. Daniel Andrews. They were good for Victorians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our our... Our diaspora is all over the you know world. I spoke to my friends and family in UK. What's been happening now? Mm. One month back, they were all you know doing party and uh, enjoying picnics all over, and all of a sudden they are into a lockdown again for six oh. months, for six okay. months for whole winter. So mm. when I when I heard about that, it uh, it made me think, yeah, Mr. Andrews has done. I think far better job. So, yeah, in, in modern times, uh, I respect him mm. and the way he works. Mm. Uh, very hardworking. It shows. It shows. Mm. You know, mm. uh, even his in his uh, conference, it shows. Mm. Yeah, you can find some uh, negative and some positive, but overall, I think he he's a good leader. So I mm. I also buy from his him as well. His leadership. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> you have a beautiful good family you have your own uh, business as well yeah 
do you do anything beyond these two activities, which is selfless, which is giving back? Do you do that some kind of thing? Yeah, of course, Mipul. Uh, since I moved to Melbourne, I'm a volunteer member of uh, Sikh community of Western Victoria, which is a Sikh temple on uh, Davis Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a member of them, uh, mm -hmm. lifetime member of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a part of our faith as well, you know, to serve humanity. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter what race, religion you are, you know, yeah. it's all welcomed. Yeah. So uh, I've been a proud member of uh, that community. Mm -hmm. We've been serving uh, free meals and other assistance uh, right from uh, bushfires. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been to Ground Zero in um, Bansdale and other parts mm -hmm. at the time. But uh, during the pandemic as well, which mm -hmm. start, started in, I think, uh, from 18th March, mm -hmm. uh, till now, uh, our place is still serving free meals to the needy in, in the Windham community. So mm -hmm. I'm been, uh, um, I'm been privileged and uh, I feel very proud that I'm a part of uh, Sikh community of Western Victoria. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these are my other, you know, off the work activities, which I do enjoy as well and feel mm -hmm. proud as well. Hmm. Now, it has 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 in this whole journey so far, are there few uh, or, or are there moments of regret that you regret? I wish I could have done this or I wish I could do that or I wish this would have not happened. Are, are there few moments of regret? Uh, as a human nature, you know, we always feel like this you know we sometimes we feel regret but but i do believe in uh, destiny um what it's been written in your destiny it will happen to you and you can't I, I think you can't change it so yeah there were some instances uh, at my personal level at my professional level as, as well which i regretted but um i always took them as a you know learning curve uh, to do far better than next times so, you know yeah, there was a couple of instances, uh, like when I was, for a small instance, when I was uh, started my own transport business, mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of decisions which I took, which I took not intentionally and which didn't pay me off. Then I thought I, I shouldn't be doing this, I should have done that. So, but yeah, now looking at, uh, after six years and now looking at, I think uh, that was a learning curve. So I take it as a learning curve, you know, no regrets. You feel for, you know, a couple of days, you feel regretful. But I think when you see, oh, you have learned something from it, this and you are not committing that mistake again. So I take it as, as a learning curve. Yeah. I think um, this is, a, as per me, I'm saying, I, I was expecting this kind of answer uh, that, yes, you've gone back memory lane, you remember the decisions you've taken, you acknowledge that you've taken the decision with or without the intent, whatever that was outcome, you accepted that outcome, you learned from that and you've kept that learning with you so that you don't repeat. So yeah. this this feature of the learning curve and the acknowledgement, that's a good feature. That's, that's a good feature. Yeah. Um, now, coming back to the social service, there are a few things that you're doing. What are a few other things that you want to do going forward with with your capability or maybe beyond your capability, but you might ask for help from people or known or unknown? What are those few things that you want to do? For the community or at my personal level? Uh, both, 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 I would say. Because if you grow, I'm pretty sure you'll help others as well grow, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, so let's list down a little bit on on what, what whatever that list is three four five things that you wish to do yeah that it come from your heart i want so, to do this 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 yeah. there are two things which i experienced and uh, as far as windham community is concerned uh, as you know it, this is the fastest uh, growing community i think in australia yep. as the uh, which, which i read in australian news that this mm -hmm. part of the land in australia is the fastest growing mm. Uh, part of the Australia, mm -hmm. so I felt that uh, being being uh, growing at so fast pace, 
our our kids are a bit suffering uh, you know we don't have much um, sports sporting clubs to mm-hmm. cater our community like mm-hmm. my kid uh, he started playing cricket uh, for verbi cricket club mm-hmm. and at that time there were only a couple of teams for at his uh, stage age but now i think they have four or five teams of every uh, under 11s and 9s under 13s so you know people are not getting uh, better opportunities so my my concern is uh, like if we are not getting um, good sporting clubs good sporting venues uh, facilities infrastructure i think uh, our kids will be lacking you know kids over here they have immense talent mm. uh, they are very talented this part of the world is totally different where we come from you know this is more opportunity for the kids kids yep. can think you know what's good for them what's good not good for them so yeah sporting clubs and sporting uh, venues more mm. more of them as as i drive trucks i go all around melbourne you know i go southeast i see places over there you know beautiful and the other thing is uh, i need windham to be more landscaped mm. uh, uh being a growing uh, community still under developed under under developed i would say mm-hmm. um it's not been properly landscaped it's a very beautiful part of the victoria mm-hmm. where flora and fauna you can enjoy flora and fauna as well but mm-hmm. it's been not been properly landscaped uh, if given an opportunity i want to concentrate on this part of uh, the work work as well Mm-hmm. and um rest uh as covid-19 is going on i want to help small businesses you know small shops mm-hmm. small uh business owners they mm-hmm. are suffering so mm-hmm. i'm not sure how it's going to happen but uh, i want to take a feedback from uh from the community so how we can help it and i want to put a case in the council how we can help the um business owners so you know keep the economy going keep the sustainable growth going uh yeah there are few other things in my mind so i'm looking forward it forward for yeah. it so what i gather is one is sporting or sports infrastructure yeah second is the landscaping third yeah. is the small businesses those are three things that you would want to work as of now that that these things are coming to your mind um but any, any other issues from the community all are welcome mm-hmm. uh, the role of a counselor is you know is a bridge between the community and the uh, council mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. all all any any suggestions any issues they are more than welcome and mm-hmm. have to be put in a uh, in a better way uh, mm-hmm. have addressed by the council in a good way in a more transparent and uh, more you know honest way so mm-hmm. you know make this community uh, feel better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now what what is your take on the educational infrastructure what is your take on um the security people's security what is your take on the transportation uh, infrastructure few few of the i think basic and essential requirements because yes you are right the western suburbs especially windham or or other few suburbs they 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 are they've grown faster and they're still growing faster so yeah there's massive i think construction going on massive uh, uh migration moving to that side yeah that all has the toll on to all these basic needs yeah. one is the security or the educational systems or or the schooling what is your take what is your reading on those those aspects um they are they are very important um security education is is you know is the base uh yeah we do lack uh, in um, in proper schooling facilities mm-hmm. uh, be more schools in mm-hmm. but uh, we can lace uh, those things with the um the state government mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. being a councillor doesn't stop you to raise your voice uh, mm. you know just at the council level mm. uh, schools yes they should be i think there are few schools in future they are coming in new uh, communities mm. but i 
something so they will cater the um, with the demand actual demand of mm. the uh, community so mm. yes there should be more better schools mm. you know schools for everyone mm-hmm. i think uh, more government schools there should be more government schools as mm. the and the community living in here they are all uh, you know new early settlers mm. people they are um, there may be some people you know they can't afford private schools or mm. grammar schools so the government should uh, chip in and they should uh, bring more schools in mm. uh, which yeah which should uh, be in the priority list mm. and security you know if you are not feeling secure living at your home i, I don't think so you will make that that area as your home so yeah. with security uh, yes there should be more um, patrolling uh either you know maybe police patrolling or you know some uh, council they can hire a uh, private security and may- maybe installing uh, extra cameras mm-hmm. on main intersections on uh, main public places you know where actually continuity of events are happening like uh, major intersection mcdonalds or uh, small shopping centers you know people feel a bit insecure so we can install more cameras mm. uh yeah um one more small not i would say small but it's a point or it's a subject um people from different parts of the world yeah. come and settle in that part of the melbourne area or zone so there are so many different nationalities yeah how would you or what would you do to you know uh, improve the engagement improve the integration uh, between think, so many nationalities yeah yeah um i would take it uh, this as a you know it's it's a it's a strength for windham that being you know you are a community you belong to a community where people from all different races culture ethnic groups they live in here um you know we can enjoy uh, lebanese food we can enjoy indian yes. food we can enjoy greek food you yeah. know all these things but uh, i think you are right there is a link missing that all these uh, communities there's no platform where all they can come together and you know share their views you know people like from greek italy they have been living in australia for 50 years you know they have yeah. wider experience but i don't think there is a platform at most of the councils in victoria where um, people from all ethnic groups they can share their experience so i would say uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's very important to um, create a platform you know maybe say a, a once a program in in 3 months or 6 months you know where we we can have a, a get together for different communities all the groups like big groups they can get together and uh, they can share their experience they can put input how to improve uh, as a council as a community there are lots of things to be to to learn from uh, people who are still living here for last 30 40 years what they have experienced what they have seen uh, getting changed and we can take um, uh, experience from other southeastern uh, councils mm-hmm. where um, again people are living there and uh, it's more people feel more livable over there mm. so we can bring uh, some inputs from that side as well mm. 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 uh the other other aspect once more um, uh, like with the pandemic there has been issue there has been a quite drastic challenge for student community yeah they they come here to study and you know they they study as well work as well um but with this c- current corona thing they have i think suffered a little more than we all residents so did you have some sort of experience where the students have reached to say uh the the, the institutions or organizations where you are part of or they reached to you as well have have you got some experience uh with respect to students right from day one uh, when this thing happened in uh, it was i think the 18th march was the first day when they where they announced that we will be having a lockdown yeah uh, there were like 
people losing their jobs, especially students, you know, uh, they were losing jobs. They didn't have much money to uh, pay their rents. Mm. And we were getting phone calls uh, mm. all over Wyndham that uh, especially from uh, Indian community students, because they know that uh, the Gurudwara is there. Yeah. So we were getting quite a few phone calls. Somebody was, um, I think we got a call from someone that uh, he hasn't had uh, dinner or lunch for a couple of days. Ooh, and sad. Pretty guy, sad. Yeah. he doesn't have any car to mm. get to get to Gurudwara and get the food. Mm. So we approached him. Mm. We offered him uh, food at the first instance, and then put some groceries in as a Gurudwara, not not as an individual, but as a as a Gurudwara, as a as a community. Uh, there were lots of cases uh, coming in. I think uh, there were a couple of uh, girls, they were out of rent, which um, people from the community, they got together and uh, shared. They were, I know someone who took a um, couple of girls to their resident. To, mm. you know, they, were, they don't have any rents or, you know, to pay to the owner. So they moved with the, that gentleman and family. Mm. So, yeah. Things are going on. It's a hard time, but uh, as a community, we should stand together. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, we're doing a good job. We all are doing a good job uh, mm. by standing shoulder to shoulder and say we are there. Yeah. And people from other communities as well, uh, uh, people from um, uh, Durga Temple, mm. in Rock Bank, uh, mm. they've been doing a fabulous job. Uh, people from Craigieburn. Uh, Sikh Temple, they've been doing a fabulous mm. job. Mm. Uh, some other local uh, clubs, they're doing a fabulous job. So I think uh, this is the, uh, as we discussed earlier, this is the beauty of Australian mm. culture, the mm. way of living, to mm. stand and stick mm. with uh, together and mm. help each other. So mm. I think, uh, yeah, as a part of uh, Western, Western uh, community, we're doing good. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, with, with respect to uh, the the voting, like uh, you 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 are heading or you are contesting the council election, right? Yeah. Um, few of the basics of voting. How does the voting happen? Because what I'm asking. I've been asked this question in last one week that how does the voting happen? And I literally had to scratch a little bit of Google and understand that how the voting happens. Now, what happens is people do want to vote. People do come out and vote, but then they do a small bit of mistakes here and there, which and they, negates yeah. or zeroes their effort of that complete vote. Yeah. So it it's not in favor of anybody yeah as a voter as a candidate as a council as a ward yeah. so if you can run through in you know uh, one or two minutes how does the voting happen then that will enlighten whosoever is listening to this conversation they'll yeah. they'll get a better idea and which ultimately will help everybody yeah yeah uh here voting is very uh, you know in uh, the voting is very informative uh, the Victorian uh, Election Council, they are very informative. Uh, plus, the way uh, campaigning goes, it gives more information to the voters how to vote, you know, how to not to commit mistakes, then your, negate, uh, your vote gets negated and it's again nothing benefit to anyone. Mm. So with this, uh, who can vote? Mm. Uh, a person who's paying uh, council rates in that respective community, mm. uh, they can vote. Mm -hmm. uh, either they are permanent residents or they're Australian citizens, you know, and if they are like someone who has uh, a, a, a property in Tarnate in Wyndham and he has uh, investment property in Melton, so he can choose where he can, he wants to put a vote in. He can't put vote in both uh, councils he can only put one so either he can choose uh, Wyndham or Melton that's upon him so you can't vote in two different uh, councils so you can put one 
plus uh, as a voter when the ballot paper arrives in in here the ballot paper arrives uh, i think after 8 of october they will start arriving uh, at residence so uh, very carefully uh, just mark your numbers in front of the candidates and you have to complete the the serial numbers like if if there are like 10 people contesting in the uh, particular ward you need to vote all of them in the uh, order preference order you you like and if if you miss a couple of them then your vote negates as well you know mm -hmm. you have to be uh, very prescribed and very thorough that you are filling every each column and uh, even uh, the candidates they they drop in um, you know the how to vote cards if if you are following uh, any candidate you can uh, take their vo uh, how to vote card as a as a reference as well mm. uh, so yeah it's be very basic very simple but you know need to be a bit careful that when you are filling uh, the preference numbers it has to be complete mm. and very clear mm. and there should be no um, you can say no over uh, over overwritings or cuttings or scribbling so mm. be clear and uh, then you can um, there's a envelope comes in you just put your vote in and you can drop it to nearest uh, post box or post office and uh, the cutoff date is 23rd and then uh, the results will be started to come out on 24th of um, October okay okay right um any uh are you uh contesting for the first time or this is a repeat or time first time yeah yeah first time how how is that feeling how how does it does it give some sort of butterflies in the stomach or some sort of stress oh. or some sort of excitement that i'm doing something not how, not, how is the feeling? not stress as I've been led by uh, a team. Um, from last, I think, uh, three elections for council elections, uh, <clears throat> there's always a member from Sikh community of Western Victoria. They participate. Mm -hmm. Last two elections, uh, uh, there was another guy who was contesting, but I think he has moved to uh, north side, so he's not contesting this time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's been a unanimous decision to mm -hmm. put my name up for elections. It was not only sole my decision. It was a unanimous decision mm -hmm. from uh, the community of Western Victoria and uh, our elders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, represent uh, and um, represent the community. Mm -hmm. So there are there's always butterflies when you do something, you know, first time uh, you you learn, you learn every day, you know, when 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 they nominated me as the candidate, uh, frankly speaking, I didn't have much knowledge. But once you are in, yeah. then you start getting knowledge. Uh, you speak to some other candidates. You speak to um, experienced people who have already contested. You know, and then uh, there's always uh, material available on the Google on the website as well. So yeah, it's still learning, it's still learning. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, if you're open to learn, open to adapt things, I think uh, we should do good. Right, right. Um, like we are almost now towards a conclude and I'm oh, keeping the, the session open to you now in a way that your thoughts from say, your heart to, to people out there. Uh, well, through your uh, through your channel, I would say first, please stay safe. Uh, the COVID is not over yet. Yes, the numbers are down, but uh, it keeps on coming. So please stay safe. Um, keep the social distancing. Uh, keep yourself hygiene, and uh, respect each other during this torrid time. You know, there may be some instances where uh, you know. Some people lose their temper. So please stay safe and respect each other. And it's it's a situation where together we can overcome this. It's not like uh, 
only Daniel Andrews or his team or at the council level. They are doing their part, but as a community, we have to step up and uh, follow the guidelines of the uh, health department and the Victorian uh, government. So as far as voting is concerned, uh, I would like to wish all the very best to all the candidates from Shafi, Harrison and uh, Irmu. And I would like to say to the voters, uh, please, uh, please be very uh, honest while voting. Doesn't matter you vote for me, for someone else. But if you think that guy can lead the community, can, uh, can listen to the problems of the community, vote for him. And uh, as candidates as well, I'll um, wish all the best to my uh, uh, my competitors in the Sheppey ward. Whosoever comes in, let's make this community, let's make let's make this council, this ward a better place, and you know, a proud uh, official, proud that we are a member, we are a uh, member of this community, this this council. So all the very best uh, to the voters, to the candidates. Um, if if somebody wants to approach you with some suggestions or some help or some guidance from from community out there, yeah. um, where can they reach you? What are your contact points? Uh, my phone number is always open, twenty four hours. It's zero four double three four seven five one eight zero, and I uh, got my email address. It's tej for Sheffy at gmail.com it's tej tango echo jack or sheffy at gmail.com uh, i'll welcome all the suggestions all the issues and uh, would like to reply them as well as as the earliest and i do have a web page on uh, facebook as well uh, that's uh tej Singh for sheffy so you can put your uh, suggestions or any issues. You can uh, leave the in the inbox as well. So I'm available all the time. And yeah. Cool. So what we do is, Tej, uh, we'll put these uh, contact details as well in our uh, description section in the video below yep. so that people who are listening to this, watching to this, they can grab those details if they need a help and they can reach to you. So that will help both the sides you as well and them as well right is that okay yeah of course cool thank you Tej, for your time and the wonderful insight for your journey from india up until and your foresight and your thought process um i could gauge uh, very cool and calm kind of personality and composed personality giving a thought learning structured giving back as well so uh, I believe uh, 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 in this pandemic time, uh, we're all safe, sound, and you know you, things will be better. So yeah. wishing you luck, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up again uh, soon. Till then, you take care of yourself, and then we catch up again, yeah? Thank you, viewers. Uh, you. you have a, a safer day and a safer week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.